Hi, I'm Cheryl. And I'm Chris. And we're with the 502 Review. This episode, we meet Travis and Juanita King, owners and proprietors of Prophecy, Inc. on Baxter Avenue. Then we have a unique opportunity to meet Mina Despande, who runs a school of Indian classical dance called Katuk. This school affords its students the opportunity to embrace their heritage and keep their culture alive through interpretive storytelling. Next, in our 8 Billion Soul segment, we have a chance to introduce Armenian-American Ark Andun. Ark speaks to us through his experiences about the American dream, what it means to him, and how to achieve it. And lastly, we meet local artist Jack Scally, who talks to us about the creative process and showcases his work. We visited Prophecy, Inc. on Baxter Avenue. When you first walk in the doors, it's immediately apparent that this is not your run-of-the-mill tattoo parlor. Antiques are scattered throughout the building, offering unique glimpses into days long gone. Paintings, photographs, and carvings adorn the walls, giving off an intimate and inviting atmosphere. And speaking of inviting, we had the privilege of speaking with Travis and Juanita King, owners and proprietors of Prophecy, Inc. I happened into it. I really didn't set out to do it, um, to get into tattooing in the first place, but view or through mutual friends and it just kind of happened that I got into it and what attracts me to it is it's always changing it's the most developing style of or medium I guess you would say um, of art that's out there um, it's changing all the time I've been doing it 17 years and I'm still learning new stuff but always doing new things I've always loved art always 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 and so when art met tattoo I was, I was uh, amazed, amazed you. It's my dream, it's his dream, and it's actually happening. Right, I, most of the artists that um, I hire and I want to hire um, are artists, I mean, that, they're tattoo artists, but they're artists in their own right in other mediums. Um, that's one of the big things, with, especially with like the revolution that I talk about. Um, artists, like I said, they use the other mediums to advance their tattoo medium. So they're always developing in the other, other genres so it helps their tattooing. Our art, our, um, this studio, our artist here, realism, folk art, neo-traditional, traditional. traditional. We, yeah, as far as artists, we want all different styles of artists. We want to be able to offer anybody that walks in, we want to be able to say, yes, we have an artist that can do this style work for you. And they are master tattoo artists. Our artists can go, as if you can see right behind you, the skateboard that he did this meeting, he won second place. I mean, they are good. We call them our prodigies. They're just talented for no freaking reason. I mean, it's real art that they do, and they just happen to be tattoo artists, so they can transfer that art that they do up there so beautifully on your skin. It's amazing. There's just so many different. Louisville is just riddled with art, as you can see in the studio all over. Just so many different mediums, and when I like everything, so when someone comes in, I'm thinking, oh, that's beautiful, I love it. Can, I have a gallery. You can, you can show this. It's a showcase for everything, just about every and anything here. It's here. Thanks with the art gallery too for tattoo arts. We're always seeing new art on the walls. We're, we're being surrounded by different styles and different influences of art, so which always influences our own personal art also. You just have to come down and check you it out. You have to come you down. Know, you just, have to take one walk through the shop. And especially if you've ever been in other tattoo studios and been tattooed other places, you come in here, everybody sees the difference. It's just, it's an attitude. It's it really a feel. is. It's a feel, it's an attitude, and it's a new level of quality of work. Even if it's not tattooing that you want, the art here stands alone by itself. Fantastic. So for your time, and Chris and I from the 502 Review wish to thank you for opening up your parlor for, or your studio for us uh, in order for us to speak with you and learn a little bit about your operation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. I started learning Kathak when I was about 10 years old. Kathak comes from north part of India and Kathak is storytelling through dancing. So the 
the dancers would go from village to village telling the stories about everyday life or maybe it could be um, from the stories from these Ramayana or Mahabharat or Krishna, you know, different gods, stories of and this is how they would connect with people and that was the part of entertainment. Then my parents moved to another place where no Kathak was available. So when I moved to Mumbai, I started taking classes over there, then got married, came to this country, then children, life, you know, the whole life when I was like about 34 years old. My husband had this opportunity, he was on a sabbatical, he went to India and I had told myself that I was going to learn something. My mother kept saying, you are living in the richest country in the world and you are not doing anything. Kathak dancing was your passion, so go learn Kathak. It was my hobby, I never thought about teaching. My teacher asked me, would you like to teach? I said, I never taught before, I have no idea and I don't like little girls. <laughs> so I used to boys. I liked the idea of teaching and then my teacher says, you go to America, why don't you teach? So when I came back to Louisville, I started teaching and some of my friends sent their children and I did that for almost 10 years. And then in 2003, Riyadh, he approached me and he says, will you teach me dancing? Because I, this is my passion. And I wasn't quite sure whether I was into it or not. She just flat out and told me no. And I said, maybe. <laughs> but it is it is like one of my biggest passion that I always wanted to learn classical, pure classical form and perform on the stage. Mm -hmm. So off and on I've been learning about 10 to 12 years. It's a great feeling, you know. Like one time in my life I thought I'd be never able to follow my passion performing pure classical on the stage. But now it seems like a dream came true. Thank you, Minazi. These girls grew on me, fell in love with them. More girls joined and started liking it. I'm yes. Meg, I'm 16. I'm Noren, I'm 14. I'm Arshin, I'm 14. I'm Ria, I'm 13. I'm Isha, I'm 12. So it's kind of good as like a tradition to come every Sunday for a certain amount of time and just dance and stuff and we always have recitals so it's basically just like anxious preparation for that. It's, it's really yeah. fun to spend our weekends over here too. Yeah. Even though it's just We like have an enjoyable time with yeah. yeah. teacher and our peers too. Yeah. Great. It's fun. It's like a passion. It's our family so we always love coming. I think pretty much all of us are really passionate about dancing and performing in general. Uh, well you get tempted by other opportunities I guess but that really there's no other option but coming here because it, I just have been committed to this school for such a long time. You, It's all that opportunity cost and what you give up, but yeah, it's Sometimes it. it gets kind of difficult with like schoolwork and stuff, but I mean, if it's something that you're really passionate for, then you always find a way around it. <laughs> it's yeah. just something that you'll always have with you. Like just being on a stage and learning how to perform, that's a skill that you will, that will definitely be useful later on. Because at this age I cannot go to perform anymore. It's when I see them dance on the stage, it's like me dancing there, my spirit. I grew up in North Carolina, and when I was growing up there, there wasn't a lot of diversity. So I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that Guthuk was an art form until I was in my early 20s. So learning Guthuk, I've just started recently within the past year. It's a way for me to connect to my culture, to learn more about myself. So that's why I got involved with it. Um, Guthuk for me is an escape it's where all of my stress I can I can let it out and um, it's like it's always been a part of me and so it's something definitely that I couldn't I have to write about because it's who I am and um, just like in my future it'll always be a part with a part of me. my thing is like you know if you have a passion for anything it's never too late you can start at any age I mean I feel like you know look at me <laughs> Sponsorship opportunities available. Contact Chris or Cheryl via the website addresses on the screen. My name is Cheryl Smith. 
And I understand um, that you are a very compelling individual, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about you. My story goes a long way. So the first 25 years I spent at Adina Rand was, was head of an experience. Uh, I was the first child uh, and very spoiled. My family took care of me very well. Uh, then we got to an Iran and Iraq war for four and a half years. So we've been traveling all over the place to survive. I was 10 years old. My mom, uh, my mother was working in the library. I can assure you that I read every single book of that library. Okay. I uh, spent it from my 20 years to 25 psychology and understanding who I am, what humanity means, and how to connect. If you go back to my teenager, what I what I saw and people were dying left and right and uh, your you're 20 and you can't even communicate with somebody, it was, it was a very bad side effect to me. I met my wife, uh, after three months we decided to get married. We, we lived with, our, with my wife's grandparents about like two and a half months. I had a hard time of getting a place because everybody was requiring credit card, yeah. background check, bank accounts and I had none. Yeah. I met this American guy and I went to him. I said, listen, I don't have I don't have credit cards, I don't have bank accounts, I only have social security and I have a job. Can you tell me how am I gonna live in this country? Yeah. And he said, Can you put that in your application? And he came and he validated where I was working. He validated where my, my wife working and he gave us the, uh, the, the place for $750. Wonderful, yes. Well, I still friend with him, I still Good. talk to him. Uh, great person, Mr. Elwin. Uh, where am I gonna be as a box boy? Yeah. They're gonna put me as a cashier maybe two years from now, and then possibly I'd be at a store manager 10 years from now? How much money I'm gonna make? I started asking all those questions for myself. The million dollar question for me was what I, what I want to be. So now you're in a country, it's full of opportunity. What do you want to do? I said, I want to do something that has to do with advertising. In this country, it's all about advertising. Yes, it is. That's what, that's what I chose, basically. So I wanted to do something with, with advertising. And I thought printing, you know, printing used to be the second largest industry in the US. Yeah, I can see this. Yeah. Uh, I took a pay cut, but I knew what the future said. After, uh, after spending enough time in operation, learning all this stuff, I started training others. I guess I become automatically a manager, but I wasn't a manager to be very honest. With you. I couldn't even deal with one person. Sure. Uh, I, I had a lot of struggles. I had to learn how to deal with people. Mm. I promised myself that I'm going to learn a word a day. After ten years, it's going to be. What is 36,500 36, words? Yes. I think I can communicate. You probably can. Handle <laughs> probably. Quitting is not, a, not an option. Anything that I can do to help myself, because I knew, again, you're getting to management. If I could only speak Armenian, I, I, wasn't, I was going to be very limited. I had to speak English. I had no choice. And I never hesitated to say words wrong. I started kind of thinking that way instead of, oh my God, if I say this word, they're going to laugh at me. Okay, well, my perspective was, okay, the forward button arc. That's what you need to be focused on. And that's what I focused on. So I became a warrior, basically. I, I became a fighter that nothing can beat me down unless I'm dead, yeah. unless I'm not exist anymore. And then yeah, I'm a, hor I'm a dead horse. You can kick me now. <laughs> so it's the mindset. It's, it's, it's what you want. I'm the first thing, listen, a lot of people are living, living a life without goals. I can't understand how. Pick a goal. What do you want to be? How do you want to be? And start focusing on it. Without it, you're lost. You're lost in a jungle that you don't know what the direction is. You have to have goals, whatever it is. I don't care if it's a short term or a long term, but you have to have one. If you don't have goals, you don't have mission, you don't have desire, you can't build, you can't motivate yourself. Listen, life is so hard out there. 
what keeps you motivated to live a life every day? You know, it's all about them. It's all about my wife and my kids and uh, how much they love me, how much they trust me. And when I'm home, I'm very committed. You know, I don't have any free time by myself. If I'm off here, I'm with my family, committed 100%. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm playing, I'm playing with my kids. Yeah. If I'm in a restaurant, I'm with my family. If I, would, if I was going to keep continuing my aggressiveness that I had in California here, I would promise I wouldn't have a zero employees. <laughs> <laughs> what? It wasn't going to work. Yeah. I had to change my mind. I had to change my mindset. I had to change, maneuver around of a lot of things. This facility is like my baby. Yeah. Because when I walked in, there was absolutely nothing in there. And now there's 80 employees with their families and feeding from here. And there's, you can't even hardly walk. It's phenomenal what happened. It, it's a great success story. But I believe in Ameri American Dream. Absolutely. I mean, we, uh, we've seen it on and on and on. That's the only country on. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of negative sides of it. But at the end of the day, you sit down and you think about it. Where else can you go to have better than this? You will find your answer pretty quick. Sponsorship opportunities available. Contact Chris or Cheryl via the website addresses on the screen. I grew up in Louisville. My dad was the, and my brother actually were the two big influences of my artwork and they're actually the ones that I kind of copied off when I was younger. Um, my dad was a woodcutter and my brother was comic book artist, old amateur at best, but he was really good. I kind of realized that I had a little bit of talent myself until about eighth grade and uh, I won my first art competition. From that point on I went to high school and uh, I kind of lost uh, the interest for it for a while. I got influenced by a lot of different things. Um, mobile, of course, was the biggest influence. Just the culture and meeting different people, different artists um, locally here that influenced my work. And uh, I, uh, from that point on, I've just been doing what is internal, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I got uh, really interested in the whole 70s psychedelic kind of ordeal and uh, and I'm really interested in sci-fi and comics and everything like that, anime. Uh, when I first learned how to draw was in fifth grade, I, I taught myself from anime books and uh, that's kind of how I learned how to draw people. It's not the greatest way to learn how to draw people, but from that point on I got really into graffiti. Um, I didn't actually go out and do graffiti myself, but I would take canvas and put, do like take paint markers and do the best way that I can, the lettering and styles and everything from that, acrylic, pastel, charcoal, watercolor, color, pencil. Um, I've worked with almost everything. I don't really, when I make something, I don't really make it for someone. I just make it. It just, uh, it's kind of like a fire burning inside of me. I just kind of have to get it out. Art is a, another world, um, big, but I would like to get my artwork in galleries. I would like to get my artwork in museums where they can be uh, take care uh, or taken care of. Um, because I don't do a very good job, I kind of just hang them up and they're there. Um, I, I would like to see people see my art for um, how I see it and actually care for it as much as I do, um, and want to show it to other people. A whole nother world of emotion and pride and joy, um, even sadness out of it, if they, uh, they, they really want to, because it's a, 
it's a lifestyle. It really is. Um, and if they're if they want to do it and they want that lifestyle, um, I would say you know don't stop, keep on doing it. I mean that's what I've been doing, and uh, it does get hard. Um, I think it's really hard sometimes um, to the point where you just want to stop. Um, but if you do have the inspiration and you have the passion and uh, don't necessarily even need the talent, um, you just need the passion to do it. Are you an artist, musician, or local venue that would like to be featured on the 502 Review? Are you looking for an opportunity to hone your production skills? Consider becoming a volunteer intern. Contact us for more details. We cannot wait to hear from you.